Sports talk conversations with a good laugh mixed in. This is the Sports Talk with Bedford and Ashby podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. All right, Lubbock Sports Medicine. Most of you know that team of doctors. They're the guys that have taken care of Texas Tech and our high school athletes and uh, junior high athletes and all kinds of people all over this area. In fact, people come in. If you were to go in, to the, go in there and sit in the lobby and just talk to people as they come in, you'll find that they're coming there from all over this part of the country because they love these doctors and they take great care of you. Go to LubbockSportsMed.com and check them out. And uh, they can they can help you. And here's the deal: they'll do the best thing for you. It's not, hey, let's have surgery. That's that maybe what you need, but they'll make sure that's what you need. And there might be a lot of other ways to get you better and well. And uh, so go see them. Also, Mighty Wash. That is the Texas Tech coaches' car wash. And there are six locations in Lubbock. I think they're building more. They have 22 total locations. That includes the Permian Basin, and they are all over Midland, Odessa, and down in that area, and uh, over in New Mexico, and Mighty Wash. That's the Texas Tech Car Wash, and we appreciate them being a part of the show. I was doing who we had last week but when Gary called in, so let me finish that real quick. It won't take long. I mentioned Dusty Wobble was on, and uh, Dusty Hart, and then uh, we were going to have two Dusties. We had them, and J.J. Johnson, who's retiring, as an assistant athletic director, he's a longtime softball coach at Coronado, one of the winningest coaches in the history of high school softball. He is retiring. He was on the show here in the studio. And then uh, we were going to have a J.J. Colleen, so we'd have had two Dusties and, J- and two J.J.'s, which that's kind of what we go for on our show. That's awesome. Neat. Something creepy, weird like that. <laughs> <laughs> so so looking uh, a week ago at the 920 spot, you had region Dusty Womble. Now yeah. you've got. Clark Lamb and Andrew Sorrels. So that <laughs> show's falling apart. Uh, I, I, I think it, it, it's going downhill. <laughs> show is falling apart. <laughs> anyway, and then we have Mike Gustafson, Dr. Mike Gustafson, who does take baseball and and uh, Bennett, you know, he does he knows a lot. He does. He does he does a great job. And we appreciate having him on. But now we have uh Gary wants me to tell y'all something. Tell Andrew and Clark thanks for coming in and I'm sorry I missed them. Uh anyway. And he, oh, he wants to say more stuff. Uh, the blow is a uh, Scott Kelman in Houston always texts to every week, and so he texted Gary, but he's not here. He said that uh, Ludwig may not have received any NIL dollars. Uh, yeah. That'd be weird if he. Well, I mean, he's an international. Kid. Oh, you can't get money through in, international. It gets tricky when it's international. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, is that it's, right? It's over our pay grade, but yeah, there's there's different stipulations. I think when you're an international kid in terms of how it, it, what the visa is and, and how that arrangement yeah we were, he was wanting Brent McGavick to work out a deal like Patrick Mahomes but Patrick Mahomes is not international he's from White House that's right so, White House Texas I didn't yeah. know that I didn't know that rule if you're international yeah. and maybe yeah. that's why we're signing so many international kids yeah yeah no. and it and it loved it he'll think he'll be he'll be all right he'll be, he'll he's gonna be he gets, okay yeah. he gets to the tour he'll, <laughs> no kidding immediately yeah. he'll be all right <laughs> the guys he won every award possible yeah. Yeah. for a college golfer no. yeah. this real year. Deal. He won every one of them. And yeah, loves Texas kind, Tech, too. Kind of selfish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's a uh, – no, he is. He. I watched a video of him. Did you see the video where he's talking about yeah. Tech? Mm-hmm. And they're saying, we, you know, Patrick Mahomes has been such a great ambassador for the – you know, he's – it's unbelievable what Patrick's done. Mm-hmm. He goes, if I could just do a little of what Patrick's done, I'll be so proud yeah. because he's been so good. And, and uh, sure well, enough – It's incredible, David, just the kids who come – from all over the world to play at Texas Tech and then have a great experience here and then yep. they are ambassadors forever. And we'll we'll talk about Davide coming up here, but I mean probably a kid who didn't know where Lubbock was, didn't know what Texas Tech was, and then now um he's telling he's spreading a, the word. Yeah, he's over he's he's back over in Europe, isn't he? Yeah, he's in Italy. In Italy Ready? Yeah. playing. Yes, sir. Playing basketball. Mm-hmm. I heard you could shut him down. Andrew, and practice occasionally. You but would shut him yeah. down. Yeah. Once he got to his sophomore year, I didn't really have a chance. I mean, he was pretty good <laughs> by did, then. He didn't play. But once he came in as a freshman, I mean, I could I could hold my own. But after yeah. that, he was pretty good. Yeah. He wouldn't even mess with you anymore, would he? No. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> Get away. Go sit over there on the bench. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like Clark said. Yeah. Remember your days at Tech? I, oh, I do. Fondly. 
Yeah, those Lonely. are great days. Didn't you didn't you love it being what happened to that guy that had all the tattoos? What was his name? Avery Benson. Yeah, Avery Benson. What Well he followed Beard to U T. Yeah, that was a great decision. I think he's now in Abilene working. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. with the job. Yes, I think he's actually selling cars, believe it or not, yeah. Avery talking, Benson. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Did he cut his hair? He, I he think he did. He was kind of a wild man looking. He, yeah, he was. He was a guy that would come into the game, dive all over the floor, play and so played hard. really hard. And, uh, was we all buddies? Beard. Yeah, we were really close. Yeah, I figured you The walk-ons kind of stuck together, but we were yeah. – that Final Four team, we were really close. Everybody was. Yeah. Avery, I mean, NIL era, I thought he would just crush it if he would have stayed here. Yeah. And he'd been the poster child for some Western wear store, and <laughs> he could have done – Really, really well. Kidding. Could have made some money. Yeah. That's right. It's, it's just his enthusiasm because <laughs> he had enthusiasm. All right. Well, y'all, you, Clark, you sent me. You got us on this text deal, and you mm -hmm. said, "Can you can y'all come on the show?" And we uh, almost didn't let you, but <laughs> no, we're honored to have you guys on. We are. And and, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. and uh, of course, I know uh, Andrew's parents, and and I know yours too, but. Um, I do know uh, Andrews from my old days here in, in Lubbock, uh, Phil and Susan, and they used to go to church with us down at First Baptist, First Baptist on Broadway. Church. That's yeah. right. Yeah, for years and years. Where are they now? They're in Fort Worth. I know they went to Monterey. Like yeah, they went did. to Monterey, but I'm older than them. I th what year did they get out? Mm, I'm probably a lot older. I don't know. I'm, mm, Seem like you're I'm a little a, bit older, I think. I think I'm but always not by older. A bunch. But they're in Fort Worth now. <laughs> I'm older than everybody now. <laughs> so well there's a couple of people i'm not but uh all right so they're doing good yes sir yeah my dad just got a new job and he started in january but they're you know they're living in fort worth they still come back for a lot of the football and What's basketball games can you tell is it top secret uh no i can share he's the he's the district attorney of, of tarrant county now and so he's been pretty busy so so if i get stopped in tarrant county i'm gonna say yeah you might you might mm -hmm. call him i'll I don't, call phil i'll get him on the phone talk to this officer yeah yeah sure depends on how glad. fast you were going <laughs> yeah because he's probably handling a lot of the traffic uh tickets and, <laughs> yeah i'm sure yeah. those sort of, that those sort of things job. yeah, yeah the, the traffic glad to hear from me. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah phil uh, this policeman here has got me pulled over but i hate he, it he went from going to like every tech game two years ago to all of a sudden his campaign started and now that he has a much more demanding job he's i think he came yeah. to three basketball games last year oh. which was like his all-time low yeah but anyways, he's well, your doing granddad, well. your uh, Kent Hans. That's right. Yes, and he is he's a character. He really is. We're gonna have him on again pretty soon. He's got lots of stories because we've heard him before because he tells them. But uh, he's so fun and such a great Red Raider. He uh, is. I mean, he loves Texas. There may be nobody that loves Texas Tech more no. than Kent Hans does. No. Yeah. He loves Texas Tech a bunch, and he he doesn't stop working. I mean, he texted me this morning like it. I think it was five oh three a.m. Just about something random. So he he didn't sleep much. He loves Texas Tech, and oh, he's obviously a great grandfather. Did you tell him you were going to be on the show today? I did not. Well, see, that would have been a. I should have really impressed him. <laughs> yeah, would have. I should have told him. I'll tell him after the fact. Yeah. Tell him and tell him we talked about him and it was all good. Yeah, we gave him a shout out. All right, so let's talk about what y'all are here for to talk about, and that's this ba the basketball tournament. Is that what it's called? Okay, who's put mm -hmm. it together? It, did ESPN put it together? So it, it, it's a separate entity. The basketball tournament TBT was started eight years ago, seven uh, eight years ten ago. years ago this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's been around for a while, and okay. they've wanted Texas Tech to have a team. They've wanted Tech to feel the team. They've seen the success that Texas Tech basketball has had. They've seen our fan base. They work with ESPN. So ESPN is the, the broadcast network that carries okay. all the games. Um, and they contacted me in the past and then reached back out to Andrew a couple years ago and really said, hey, can you guys get some former players to come back and feel the team? Um, and Andrew championed that effort and then pulled me in. And it, it's a great deal, David. It's going to be fun for – the, we'll play the the, now, how many teams we got? Now, this tournament that's going to be at the United Supermarkets Arena, mm -hmm. that just tech, yeah, that's tech. just a regional is the Lubbock portion at the USA. Okay, so there's that, just so there'll be other teams from yes, other schools. There'll be, there'll be eight teams at the Lubbock Regional. We're starts, going to have one Texas Tech team, correct? Air Raiders, yes, Air that's right. Raiders, yes, sir. Okay, and the tournament 64 team. The bracket set up similar to March Madness 64 team single elimination. ESPN kind of airs it because you know the, they attract the audience because it's set up that it's a it's a million dollar purse. So you win the tournament, you win a million dollars. You get second, you you get nothing. So guys tend you to you got to win. You got to win it. This yeah, will be yeah. winner take be all. Serious. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And with it being in Lubbock, we've it's been a lot easier getting tech players, the players that we want involved. So that's we're excited. Okay, but about where's that. the where's the championship game played? Philadelphia. That's okay. the final four. Yes, sir. The final four is in Philadelphia. And mm-hmm. when is that? August third, I believe, is the championship game. Right. And we start here in Lubbock. When will our our tournament be here in Lubbock? And you gotta win if you win this tournament here in Lubbock, you're gonna go to Philadelphia? No, so there will be three games here for us to win. And okay. if we make if we win all three games, we'll advance to Louisville, which will be considered the Elite Eight. And if oh. we win that, then we go to the Final Four in Philadelphia. Yeah, oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, we're across the country. Well, you got to do you got to <laughs> win? Are there are there four Elite Eight tournaments? No, 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 no. It's just no. It's similar to March Madness. So our round of sixty four will be in Lubbock. If okay. we win that, we're still in Lubbock for round of thirty two. If we win that, our Sweet Sixteen game will still be in Lubbock. Okay. If we win that, okay, now I'm with you. If we win that game, if we make it out of Lubbock alive, which we anticipate doing, we'll advance to the Elite Eight in Louisville. Okay. And if we win that, we advance to the Final Four in Philadelphia. For the yeah, this is a cool deal. It is. It's really neat. And I mean, you look at what's going on in the month of July, sports wise. Besides yeah. the Thetford and Ashby show, <laughs> you've got yeah. you've got something now that people can go out and bring their families to, and that fact that it's in the USA. So we'll play. Wednesday, July 19th, when we'll play Friday, July 21st, then that Sweet 16 game would be Sunday the 23rd of July, okay. all at the USA. That would be so yeah. fun. Yeah. And, 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 and what other schools are coming here, do we know? It's not official yet. It should be announced within the next couple of weeks. New Mexico is going to have a team. North Texas is going to have a team. And then uh, UT Austin is anticipating having a team. So it will be a competitive regional. Yeah. Well, we're we're your getting. Brother, is your brother going to play on the UT Austin team? No, he, he's not. <laughs> if he did, he probably couldn't get out of bed for a week. So he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna have to he's gonna have to. Are pass you gonna on play that. on the Tech team? No, Are I've you? been asked that question. Andrew, both. Of, hey, you guys Andrew, gonna lace them been, up? Yeah. No, we're trying to win the tournament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we want to be competitive. <laughs> Y'all can sit over there on the side like you used to. Well, and and uh, yeah, we we could. We probably will. That'll be a stipulation, but. I, I told Andrew. Don't put me in. I told Andrew. I said. I said. You know, there's a reason that you and I are involved in this. Is because uh-huh. anytime there's, of course, Andrew's raising money at Tech. I'm I'm with Madeira now. But anytime yeah. there's money to be raised, somehow I end up involved with well, it. I know. Um, but we you like asking people for money. Yeah, kind of. Not really. Kind of. But we we have to fund all the expenses for these guys. So we're flying Moretti from overseas to here, oh my putting them all See, up. And, yeah. Well, and, I mean, and, y'all like the people to give money. Yeah, it, we're working on that. We've got some good progress. Really, um, we want it to be something these guys have a great experience. One, they're not paying out of pocket for meals. Yeah. They, so we anticipate this coming back to Lubbock every year. So we want to really set it off right this year. And, and the big deal is ticket sales, too. You know, We think we can fill at least the lower bowl for how our much, games. How much are the tickets? Have you all talked about that? Yeah, they're going to range from 25 to $35 per seat per session, I think. That's great. Mm-hmm. So very yeah, affordable. affordable. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it'll be good. And you've so, seen some of the players. I mean, these, Oh, yeah. Well, I, well, you only gave me three names. Matt Mooney, mm-hmm. who Matt's been on our show because we promote his camps when he oh, comes to yep. town. And Matt's a good friend. And I, Davide, has, I don't, I, he might have been on the show once, but he, he he's not, you know. He's not a friend? Well, yeah, he's a, yeah, I like him fine. I don't really know him that good. And Tariq we have never had on. If we had mm-hmm. had Tariq at full strength mm-hmm. in the national championship oh, game, the yeah. Red Raiders would be national champions. No we should have been no anyway. Question. That's right. No but question He about was it. not full strength, and the man was phenomenal yeah. in the tournament. Yeah, his I mean, ankle was pretty swollen. He was unbelievable how mm-hmm. good he was. Yeah. But that's all. I don't think. Yeah, that's the. It's pretty much the backbone of the team. And then we have. Uh, you might remember John Roberson played for Bob Knight his last year. He has the career yeah. assist record and three pointers made. And then we have uh, Davion Warren who played yeah. on that Sweet Sixteen team with Coach Adams that lost to Duke. And then we have Todrick Gocher. Oh, I'm yeah. sure you're accustomed oh, yeah. with. Uh, how many guys are going to be on the team? Ten. We'll have about ten. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. Because yeah. everybody's going to want to play. That, that right. is right. And we've that, actually that had correct. last year it was we were pulling teeth trying to convince guys to play. This year we've had to turn some guys down. Mm-hmm. Just you know, Mikey Marshall might want to play. And Mikey could still play. He could still yeah, play. Yeah, he just he, got a job. He got the yeah. average yeah. yeah. basketball right. coach good a job. For him. He's a yeah. he's a good guy. But yeah, we had overwhelming interest because I mean people wanna these guys want to come recreate 
kind of being in the spotlight yeah. and the nostalgia of Rick playing in, in campus. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> <laughs> he's seventy. He came in seventy two. Yeah. yeah, the year's freshman became eligible, which was fortunate for Tech. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, Ron Richardson. I talk to Ron Richardson all oh, the time. Ron, yeah, yeah. I talked to he's, him this past week for about an hour. Wow, it, he's such. A, he's six ten and a great player from Compton, California. Mm-hmm. He's back out there now. But I will tell you, everywhere Ron Richardson goes, he promotes Texas Tech. Yep, that's well, right. He's a phenomenal right. guy. I remember he came out and we were playing in Anaheim. The yeah, Andrews last year. It. I mean, he was out there because he, oh, he loves in California. He, yeah. yeah, he loves the Red Raiders. Yeah, and that's the goal of this too, David. I mean, it, it's to to get the double T on a national stage and yeah. promote Texas Tech and promote the program. And Coach McCaslin, Andrew, and I've talked to him. He's he's all about this. Oh, he's you know, here. He's actually. Yeah, I've talked to him. Yes. He's yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. I've tried oh, yeah. to talk to him. We he played when he came the first time to mm-hmm. Lubbock with Coach Dickey as director of basketball operations. He played on my city league and church league team with me. Oh wow. For a wow. couple of years, yeah, and so we're close, close friends. Yeah, and I can't get him on the show. You know, he, of course, he told me we texted, and he said, "Let me get a team, and then yeah. I'll be on the show." Once he gets his team and staff figured out, he'll come on the show. I think he had three, three players. Yeah, he's got his priorities in order. He does that. Yeah. You know what they're doing this morning? He was going to be on this morning. That's why I was going to move y'all back, mm-hmm. and but I want him to come in the studio. He, he can't be on this morning because they're playing paintball. They're he's taking the team. To some paintball deal, and they're going to shoot each other. I wow. guess team bonding. Wow. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, he's a program builder, man. I'm telling you. Oh, so, he is. You know, Andrew and I are assembling a team for the Air Raiders. He's also assembling a team of sli- a slightly yeah. greater importance. For, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, hey, I promise the fans will love this, and, mm-hmm. and and Red Raider fans will really love it. So yeah, it'll be it'll be a blast. We'll have a lot more player announcements come in, and um, we can get into who the coach is going to be. As well, because yeah, that's going to be that's going to be important. It? We no, do. Don't tell you. Yeah, that will tease yeah. them here well, after yeah, the break. Yeah, yeah. People will be standing next to the radios. Yeah, they can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah, they're all on TV. See you. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh-oh. There's lots of. Last week we got preempted for the Estacada graduation. We were on from nine to nine thirty. Then nine thirty they took it and did it, and it was really nice. We watched it. We'll yeah. be back with more sports talk conversations with a good laugh mixed in. This is the Sports Talk with Bedford and Ashby podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Bednars and Associates, that's Daryl Bednars and uh, his wife, Bunny, and uh, Brittany's there, and Blake's there. It's a family deal going on there. Pretty much, well, all but about one, I think, are working there, and they do all kinds of insurance, from homeowners to auto to, you know, the personal lines you're looking for, but uh, they do Every kind, I you know, if we just go in there and say, I need to get this insured, I bet they can handle it for you. And if they can help you and save you money, that's what they'll do. But ag producers, you need to be talking to Daryl Bednars because he is a pro at ag insurance, whether it's ranches or farms or uh, the things that go with it. They can help you. They don't do crop insurance, but that's a separate entity. But, uh, boy, they can protect your equipment and all that kind of stuff that you have out there. They can help you at Bednars and Associates. But Gavick Nissan and Infinity. Dang, there's a sharp deal here. McGavick Nissan and Infinity of Lubbock. That is uh, Brent McGavick. And uh, Gary mentioned, or somebody did earlier about getting, uh, yeah, Gary did about getting uh, Patrick Mahomes. And, of course, he is bought in to McGavick Nissan. And uh, they they were behind him when he first got here, and he's still with them. And that tells you a little bit about that tells you a lot about uh, Patrick Mahomes, and it tells you a lot about McGavick Nissan and Infinity of Lubbock, because uh, he he loves them, and uh, they they take care of him, and he takes care of of them, and uh, it's a great deal. And that's where you want to do business with people like that. Family owned dealership number one in the country in Nissan trucks, and uh, just a outstanding uh, dealership located on spur 327 is where infinity of lubbock is and then the nissan dealership is right around the corner on milwaukee you can see one from the other uh, when you're standing at one and of course we did our red raider club this morning because uh, we had andrew Searles on he did a great job talking about all the things that are red raider club we want to encourage you to be a part of that and uh we've got uh, coach hayward all right well coach welcome to the program good to be here what, what, are you, what are you doing right now? Did y'all just y'all take it easy this morning? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, usually on a night game or something, we'll have a you know some of the guys will go to work out, stretch, do the routine stuff. Uh, but other than that, we just kind of hang out till lunch, eat lunch, and then come back and get ready to go to the ballpark. How sweet was that win yesterday, Coach? Oh, it's it's always sweet. Anytime you win a game's good, but when you beat a team that's 
ranked where they were ranked and and you know you could tell they were they were they had a good team they would they look uh, good they did look yeah good. but they you couldn't hit know, us our pitching was well, phenomenal we, you know we just had one of those days uh Molina was hitting his spots and he, they had a hard time hitting the ball up in the zone and he kept throwing it there and he kept swinging and missing so <laughs> that helped a bunch and uh you don't see that a lot but Every now and then you'll you'll get that and that happens and and it's, a, it's a, you know for Molina, it's a it's a fun day to pitch and for us it's a fun day to watch. Now he's been doing he's been doing great and then of course you bring in Brandon Beckel and and uh, and then close it out with Josh Sanders. I've been so impressed with Josh Sanders lately, Coach. I don't know what happened, but somebody lit a fire under him. He's been unhittable. Yeah, he's uh, you know he's working on been working on stuff for a long time. He's had some stuff. It happened through the year, personally, family-wise, and I think probably uh, has has hurt him a little bit. But uh, he's done a good job uh, working hard and sticking with it. And he's one of those kids that you pull for. You know, you just want him to do well. Keeps working at it. He's changed his uh, delivery a little bit and done some things to tweak. Uh, I know Max tweaked a few things with him. It's made him better. And he's got more confidence. And so now uh, he's done a good job for us, and hopefully he can continue. Yeah, well, I hope so too because he, he, what was he, three up, three down when he came in there in the ninth. Well, he just, well, the, you know, the, what's neat about that is Josh has always got ground balls, and his problem is, is, is uh, he gets up in the zone too much and ball flattens out and ends up they hit it yesterday, and and then also he's fallen behind a lot of guys through the year, but uh, the last few times he's come in, he just pump, you know pump the strikes and. Throw, keep the ball down the zone and, and just coming right at guys. And, you know, when, once once a pitcher figures that out, that, hey, I, I just come at it. If they hit it, they hit it. If they don't, they don't. Uh, it always works out for the better. Yeah. Well, you're an old pitcher, and, you, and you're and you an old pitching coach. And you've been to Texas 2013, right, Coach? And I get that right? right. I was going to print Correct. your bio out, but I didn't have enough paper. Yeah. <laughs> you got a great yeah. bio. You ought to read it sometime, yeah. Coach. You're pretty impressive. I, I I don't know about that. <laughs> you uh, are. I'll tell you. I don't know about that. I'll, and I'll, more so I'll, as a man, that is a. I, well, I just love who you are and what you do and uh, your testimony and uh, what you've been through this last year or so with this health issues and how you've come out of that. I'm thank the Lord for that. Right. Uh, exactly. And I I get up every day and feel very blessed. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things. You know, I I told some other day. Uh, well, actually, it was Randy Mayhew from West Virginia, the head coach. I was talking with him, and he was asking me, you know, going through because he went through a deal ordeal with his back, and it was a big deal for him. And he was asking me, he said, "Boy, I bet you sure look at things differently after this past year." And I said, "Yeah, I do." I said, "It's amazing how a lot of things that were were real important aren't very important anymore. It's it's like they're not that big a deal." But <laughs> I said, "There's one thing that." Uh, that I haven't changed. He said, what's that? I said, I still hate to lose. <laughs> and that didn't go I, away. I, that did not go away. I, I know. Maybe I was hoping maybe that did, but I still, I, boy, when I lose, I, I, I've got to grip my teeth and turn around and walk off because I just, I just, I just can't accept it. I just don't like it. It's just the way it is. Yeah. But, uh, well, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, well, you want to win and, and you know, you're a coach and you want your players to want to win and, it doesn't. It doesn't do really that good if you show up at the games and go, guys. It really don't matter if we win. Let's oh, just gosh. let's just have I fun. I, I always yeah. found that you have a hard time having fun when you're losing. You do. You do. You have a uh, have a hard time when you when you're losing. <laughs> you really everybody, do. Everybody does, and and so no, it's it's one of those things where uh, I think, like you just said, uh, the players know. I mean, they can tell coaches, you know, the way they feel about certain things, and. And if you're in a, you know, an excited mood, if you're worried, if you're concerned, uh, so whether you you're pitching against the number one pitcher in the, or playing against the number one pitcher in the country, it doesn't matter. You got to act like, oh, this guy's nothing. You, you just go out and hit the guy. Yeah. Because uh, if you look concerned, they're going to be concerned. And so, uh, of course, I when I played, I I don't know why, but then that was probably my downfall. But I always wanted to play the best teams and and pitch against the best teams and hit against the best pitchers because I, that's what I wanted to do. I want to mm-hmm. see how good I was. I want to see how I can, yep. you know, compare to the other good ones. I didn't want to play against all the lesser teams. And, and that was one of my downfalls because a lot of times I'd 
<laughs> I didn't do as well against him you because could. I just <laughs> yeah. didn't have the same. Uh, uh-huh. I don't know. I just didn't have the same drive, I guess, uh, against the lesser teams. And yeah. so I seem to play better against the better teams. So. Well, that's the kind of players you want to have is they oh. they want to get out there and compete. And I'm proud of this Red Raider team. I you know I have I've been a hard figuring this team out, coach. But I, we did figure this out earlier today, and and uh, y- y'all probably already figured it out. But connect UConn scored two runs in mm-hmm. the game. Both those guys got on base by the walk. The mm-hmm. only two guys we walked, and they scored yes. two the two. Qu- quit walking people, right? Oh, uh, it's been. That's been a big deal, but uh, for us this year, and I and you know you can you can try to put your finger on it, and you can try to come up with all the reasons why, and uh, but I think the main reasons is just the fact the lack of experience that we have on the on the team, yeah. and uh, as the pitchers, and they and they go in, and, and obviously they don't want to walk guys. We all know that, but. Uh, sooner or later, they've got to understand that, that for them to keep pitching <laughs> and for us to win, we can't walk people. And yeah. especially when you get, you know, leadoff walks, two out walks, mm. you know, the games, you, that, that's not playing the game right. And you, it's going to, it's not going to reward you. It's going to, it's going to bite you. The, the baseball karma is going to get you. And so, you know, that's the, one of the things I know we've been trying to teach the kids all years. Hey guys, you've got to compete. You know, you get a, you get a lead or you have a have an inning where your team scores three or four runs, you gotta come out and you can't walk the first guy. Yeah. You gotta come out attacking the guy. And if he gets a hit, he gets a hit. That's fine. But don't like walk. Said, something about a walk, coach. It deflates the team. I mean it's just, you know, you can t- a guy gets a hit, well good for him. He got a hit. Right. But just right. giving him a free pass. And we didn't do bad. We only walked two the whole game. Yeah, but but like you said, it's amazing how those hurt you. I, I've always said forever. I tell pitchers all the time. I say, you know, you guys, you go out there and pitch in a game, and you, you know, you battle, you compete, and and they just hit you and they beat you. Yeah. And you come off the field and everybody's going to congr- you know say, hey, great job, though you competed, da da da. And then when you go after the game's over, you go see your mom and your grandma and everybody. They're all hugging you. And, <laughs> loving you and saying, honey, don't worry about it. But I tell yeah. you what, you got there and walk a bunch of guys and you come off the field and your grandma won't even talk to you. I I'm guarantee no it. <laughs> She's going to be mad. What are you Mom's doing? going to be all over you. Here's a funny story. Ron Reeves, who you know Ron, he, he's a quarterback at Tech years yeah. ago and, yeah. and, and, yeah. A, and a great athlete and a great player. Well, he was a great pitcher at Monterey too. He played for Coach Bobby Makel. And, uh, he was thirty and three as a pitcher. Not in, you know, not to even say what he did as a football player, which was you know, what he ended up playing at tech. But right. he's pitching one day for Coach Magel and he's can't get the ball over the plate. And uh he's just walking people. They finally get out of the inning. And this was not very common for Monterey because they, you know, won almost every time they, and I think they won that game that he was walking everybody. But he walked several people and Ron comes over to the to the dugout. And he throws his glove down, you know, up against the bench. And Coach Magel's on his way down there to see him. And because Coach Magel didn't tolerate that kind of stuff, not not throwing yeah. the glove, he didn't go for that. But he he didn't go for walkings. What he didn't go for. Sure. So yeah. he goes, Reeves, what are you doing out there? Uh, and uh, and Ron is real fiery competitor. He says, I'm walking him on purpose. Like he, he meant to be walking him. He was so mad, you know. Not at Coach Magel. He was just mad at himself. Sure, I'm walking yeah. him on purpose, and uh, yeah. it, you just can't. You, that never works out, and it, you know. And I, it takes so long to walk people too. If you notice that, Coach, we mm-hmm. go we go to three two, and they foul it off, and they, you know, go. I love those guys. Like Sanders has been this way lately. He go, he's going out there, and he is the master of the plate. He is throwing strikes. And oh, moving yeah. the ball around, that's what that's what you're looking for. Oh yeah, that's that's exactly. And like and like you said, if they get hit, they get hit. That's yeah. baseball, and that's that's part of the game. But but the walks is just it, I don't know. They're just not acceptable. I mean, it's just the way it is. Unless yeah. unless we want to walk somebody, and we really don't care if we walk somebody. We got a base open, and you got the three or four hole hitter up or something. And, Something at a point where you don't want you don't want the guy to hurt you. Yeah, there, there's times for it that you'll you'll do that, but you know when those times are. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, 
you got to compete with those strikes. And I, you know, with the with the guys that we have this year, a lot of a lot of, a lot of them are young. A lot of them that are back that don't have a lot of experience. Uh, they they want to throw strikes, but sometimes it takes a little while for them to figure it out. And, and you know, they've never been hit before. Most of them, uh, they've always been real successful. Then they get up here and they they run into a, some pretty good players, and they start having some failure, and then they start th- doubting their ability and and. So there's a lot more to, to pitching than just going out there. You got to work with their mechanics, but you also got to work with their head as well. Yeah, the, the mental part of it. Well, people yeah. may be wondering, uh, and you might be too, what did Coach Magel do after Ron did that and said, I'm walking yeah. him on purpose? Coach Magel had this unique thing that he always did when he had had his say, and he had, or he had, you know, that was nothing. He, he showed you the number 20 on his back, he, he'd just walk off. <laughs> And yeah. leave and leave you sitting there to think about yeah. uh, what he had just said, but that was the end of this. He didn't get mad, or he just you know. And then Ron, of course, came back and responded like he always did. But uh, there's you know, it's just that mental frame of mind. I think you hit on it, Coach. And sometimes you can just see it in their eyes, can't you? These pitchers when they're just the master of what's going on out there, and you know it. Oh yeah, yeah. You can look at them when they walk in and. A lot of times you you can tell the first pitch or two uh, what they're going to do and how they're going to respond to the whole situation, and uh, so that always helps, you know, for that. And when you can see that a pitcher that's going to come in and and really respond like that, then that's, I mean, that's that's a lot of fun. But then there's also that time that you look at and you go, um, I don't know about this, you yeah. Know? So not looking good. Who's the, who's the most competitive guy you ever coached or ever played against? I mean, you know, just to, or played with the most. I think, com- I think we lost him. I think his uh, oh. call dropped. Well, let's call I'll, him back. I'll, yeah, we'll call him back. All right. Well, I didn't know. It sounded strong. The The signal sounded strong. So we'll see if we can get Coach Ray Hayward back on the phone here with us. He's a special assistant coach. To Coach Tim Tadlock, he was the pitching coach at Tech uh, for uh, a few years and mentored. I'm looking at this list of people that Coach Hayward mentored and that went to the pros and everywhere else from Texas Tech. But uh, and Coach Kitley's here. He's Coach Kitley's outside. He's going to spend the Coach Kitley's going to stay the last hour in the studio with me. Coach, can you believe that? Oh man, you're lucky. I know he's it. A, I'm he's very a good fortunate. Man to have oh, he is. But uh, who was, I was asking you, who was the most competitive guy you ever coached? Let's just stay with that. The most competitive pitcher that you ever coached? Well, we've had, we've had, a, I've had a number of them, but just two that come to mind. I've got one, one when I coached OU, a guy by the name of Mark Roberts. Uh, they called him Mook. And ironically, he and, and, a, and Dominic Marino, Dom Marino here at Tech, ironically, they're almost identical as far as, just you know, five ten guy, little right handers. That I mean, they're just soon fight you. Look at you. Yeah. And I mean, they they come at you, and you knew. And both of them were successful, but but you knew when they went in the game, you were gonna get a hundred ten percent effort, and they they yeah. weren't gonna back down from anybody. They weren't gonna be scared of anybody. Coach. And so whether they got whether they got hit or not, whether they had a good game or bad game, you knew you were the best out of them. I got you. Well, those are the kind you like to have. I can tell you that. What about this? We only got about a minute left, but what about Florida? They're number two ranked in the country, right? They are. And, uh, you know, they're a good ball club, but as you saw, just look at the game yesterday. They played Florida and m is three to nothing. So they scored three runs off of them. And so these guys, we can beat anybody at any given day. And we've got the team to do it. If we play like we're capable of, we can beat it. So hey. that's the way I look at it. And, Go from there. Tell them good luck. We're, we're, Coach Kidley just put on the headset, but uh, we'll them, okay. we're going. <laughs> All right. We'll see you, All Coach. Right, Thank you for being on today. You bet. Thank you. All right. Sports Talk Conversations with a good laugh mixed in. This is the Sports Talk with Bedford and Ashby podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Talking about the Rawls course, and uh, if you're having a tournament, go have it out there. Because, I mean, you just turn it over to them and they do all the work and they do a great job with it out at the Rawls course. A lot of you already know that and you're having your tournaments there, but it's I'm sure the members wish that maybe we didn't have as many tournaments, <laughs> but they do a great job out at the Rawls course. J&W Services, Lynn Co. Distributors, this is Brent Beck and Scott Blakely. And uh, 
these are tech guys, and they have this company down. Now, Jan Davis Services, this is a, a conglomeration of several companies that do different things in the oil and gas business. But really the wellhead and, and getting the pressure up and all those kinds of things, this is what they do. And they keep you up and running. And you got to have these people. And they're Red Raiders. Isn't that great? They better just, believe it. You can get some Red Raiders to help you down there. And we love these guys. They do it. They're the, one of the main reasons we're on down in middle of Odessa. And we're proud to be on down there. And uh, we're thankful for that. All right. It was great to talk to Coach Ray Hayward. Is the, Boy, he was one fine man right there. You better believe it. I'm so so thankful. Good Lord took care of him. He survived. Yeah, I know it. And uh, He had a heart just, transplant for those of you that didn't know. What a great example he is. And the faith he has. Oh, it's, what it's, a great man. Yep. Similar to you. Uh, it's if you hadn't had a heart transplant, but no, I hope I don't have to do no, that. No, but you've uh, you. been a great inspiration to so many, Coach, and and uh, with how you handle yourself. Long time, Coach. You ever dream you'd be? I, I, I don't know how many, how long, how long total have you been I coaching? Just, I'm, uh, after this week, it'll be twenty four. Oh and my God! I'll but, be starting twenty five. Yeah, but uh, that's at fall. Tech, isn't it? That's at Tech. Oh well, yeah, oh, yeah thirty nine well, seasons. Yeah, that's what I want to know. I'll be starting number forty. Yeah, uh, I'm finishing up thirty nine. As head coach. As a head coach. I was an assistant for one year uh, there before I became head coach. So At Abilene? At Christian? Abilene, yeah. yeah. Have you been to Abilene Christian lately? Have you seen their – I love that place. I have, Both actually. The facilities are uh, phenomenal. They had me back about three weeks ago. My former athletics director, Cecil Leaguer, who was the head tennis coach but then became athletics director, he asked me and uh, Chris Thompson, mm -hmm. uh, who used to be here and used to be the head coach, to come back. And we talked to all the head coaches about – it was really how to win, but I don't know uh, yeah. how good we did. But Chris couldn't come, but they had another speaker. And then uh, the athletic director at North Texas, who used to be the AD, we were on a panel. And so I was there, yeah, two weeks ago and got to visit with all of the whole, all the coaching staff. We were there a morning. Yeah. And, uh, and it was, it was fun. Yeah. That is cool. Well, uh, you know, how many national championships you won at Abilene Christian, but a bunch? 29. 29 got, national championships. got one here, so we got 30 total. But well, uh, you got, I need to get a few more here. You got 28 to go to catch up. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> one national championship. But, you know, in the history of Texas Tech, we've had two. Yeah. You and the Lady Raiders in 93. Yeah. We need some more, don't we? We need more. I was we're hoping, going to get more. I was hoping Greg was going to get us one. Oh, I know it. Uh, but uh, – they had a great team. They really did. The golf team, Greg Sands, and of course we almost won it with men's basketball in nineteen. Oh, That's so close! That's so close. That's the same year I won. We could yeah. have won two national championships same in one year. year. That's right. That, <laughs> that would have been something. That kind of helped soften the blow just a little bit when you came back and won that national championship. Right. That was really good in two thousand nineteen. You produced thirty NCAA champions. You might not have known all this. Two hundred and eighty three. First team All Americans, two hundred and three Big Twelve champions. How many Big Twelve championships have you won? Uh twelve. Twelve. Is that counting that men and women or men and women. Yeah. Yes. Uh twenty Olympians. Yeah. Uh, eight Olympic medalists. There may be more because this seems to be a little dated because they had you with nine Big Twelve championships, but you just won another one. <laughs> just, we had two this year. Two so we this got year. indoor and out. Yeah. Indoor and out. Yeah, that's right. And. uh and uh, you were named Coach of the Year by the Big 12 Coach of the Year. Congratulations for that. Very well deserved. And the seven top five uh, NCAA team finishes and 15 top 10 NCAA team finishes. And you're going for your second national championship, and it starts, is it June the 7th? Yeah, on Wednesday, the men get started. Uh, they, they've separated the genders to where it's Wednesday men, Thursday women, and then Friday finals mm -hmm. men, and then finals Friday. Well, I Saturday. appreciate them separating the genders. We're having a hard time with that these days. <laughs> yeah, we are, aren't we? Yeah, I'm glad they I'm uh -huh. glad they did that. It's hard on a coach. We'd rather just have the whole meet, you know, the uh -huh. fun day. The men and women go together, but it does give them their special day. It and, does. Uh, so it's not all bad. And I like the rest day with our sprinters, especially as you know, strong as we are there to run all out on Wednesday and then have to come back the next day would be pretty tough. So mm -hmm. giving them one day off really helps. All right. So this uh, national meet is coming up in Austin. Now, how come it's not in – I was talking to somebody, and they go, well, I guess you're going – they're going to Oregon. And I go, no, yeah. it's in Austin. What's well, the it deal? was a unique deal. Uh, in eight, 17 and 18, they started building the Taj Mahal, I call it. It's like a th 300 million Nike uh, built it for them, a new stadium. 
in Oregon. And so it took two years to build it. Well, Austin was going to give them their break while they're building Mm -hmm. for two years, 19 and 20. Well, 19, we go and we win it. And they were planning on 20, and then here comes COVID. Mm-hmm. So they're just getting back the year, that, and they wanted it. So Oregon's having to give it back, and they wanted it this year. And then once this year's over, it'll be at Oregon forever. From now on. Yeah. Because they'll have the facility. Yeah, well, the Nike, they, I think they give them $2 million a year, the NCAA, to say, can we host it? Well, you yeah. know, they're not going to turn that down. <laughs> it is a beautiful facility, but the weather's always iffy there. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, I like it, but I don't love it. I'd rather be in Austin. I'm mm-hmm. not in Texas. Yeah. I want some heat. <laughs> Let's get us a facility. We'll, we'll do something bigger than Nike. Yeah. And it will start hosting it here in Lubbock. Uh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> it really would be. Well, you've got the finest indoor facility in the world. I think so. It's it's second to none, in my opinion. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for our kids. We don't have to travel, you know, indoors. Yeah. So January and February and March unbelievable how our kids don't get beat up and if you're in a place that doesn't have an indoors and you got to travel every week Mm -hmm. because indoors you got to be one of the top 16 to make the ncaa so every week as you're trying to qualify trying to qualify trying so there's Mm -hmm. a lot of pressure there for about five weeks to get it done and you only got about five yeah so uh outdoors a little different you got to have a qualifying mark to be top 48 in your region but then you got to go beat people yeah so makes a big difference well, I know you've looked at the numbers, and I've got the printout here of the uh, people that number of participants we have. We yeah. have 13 in the yes. men, and we have, I don't know how many women. Oh, I do, too, because I, I printed them out. Not that many. One, two, and then the then the re, uh, the triple jump, we got four. Yep. In the trip, one one event. That's right. We're really strong there. And, you know, we're, we're we, 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 on paper, we've got really three triple jumpers that could score big. On the women's side, Demisha in the hurdles and Rose in the hundred, uh, and the four by one could could get us some points. So if we can do that, we still can be a top ten team if we really rock and roll in those yeah. events. Because boy, it is so good at this level. And you score twenty points at the national meet, you're in top ten. Oh yeah, within the women. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably the men too. Probably you're close. It's yeah. uh, it's a uh, it's really it's just really hard to score them points. I know. It would. Arkansas has eighteen. Yeah. Now, that could be, I guess, a little bit deceiving, maybe, you know. It is. They're they they're unbelievable. Uh, you know, the NIL nowadays, and this is no excuse, but they've, they've used it to their advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they have really given out a lot of money for NIL. And there's five Tennessee. Tennessee lost their coach. And so tennis, five Tennessee's main studs went to Arkansas. Oh. And they gave them NIL. So they've got – a ton of transfers on this group. Yeah. Very good. Two discus throwers, a shot putter, two decathletes, two long jump, three triple jump. If they win the national championship, it'll be because of their field events. Yeah. They have one hurdler in the short hurdles and one long hurdler. It really is all we're worried about on the running. So but we, field events. We, they need to fall flat in the in the field, field events. events. Yes. They for us to have Walter. a chance. We they don't have a pole vaulter. We have a really good Yeah, one. we do. We do. <laughs> We and that final it. is Wednesday, and I'd love to start that meet off with some eight or ten points in that event. So they'll, really they'll jump on, on Wednesday, and it'll be over. It will. Zach it will be done. Zach will be done, and we'll, that's the only field event we have that's a final. Now, the long jump, they've got good long jumpers, and it'll be a long jump, so I'm sure Arkansas will be on the board. But, you know, it comes down to qualifying. I mean, yeah. we've got two in the 100, two in the 200, two in the short hurdles, and two in the long hurdles, and a four-by-one all on Wednesday in the pole vault all on wednesday so we have to make the final we've got to get those guys through if the we finals do then we'll be on friday, on friday. if yeah. we do we're going to be tough we're going we're going to have a chance to score a lot of points but you've got to get there i know you've already done it all joe key starts us out with the decathlon yes and he's he's been injured all year and he's healthier than he's ever been so i'm really hopeful he's ranked about 16th but i think he can get us a point or two if he's having yeah. a good meet and, and those would be imperative. We've got Devin Robertson in the discus. Get us a point or two. Uh, we've got Keyshawn King in the triple jump. Get us a point or two. You look up, you've got five or six points out of them. Yep. Wow. That'd be huge to go along with our 100, our 200, our four-by-one, our quarter yeah. hurdles, our short hurdles. Yep. Yeah. This this gives our people out there you know, something to follow. They can yeah. say, hey, if we come out of those events and we got five, six, seven points, yeah. that's big. 
But I know you've, I know you've been doing the math. <laughs> you've been figuring it out in your oh, head. Oh yeah, I think we can score fifty points if we have a yeah. great meet. And I don't know if that's going to be enough to win or not. But it's if it isn't, then it isn't because we that's that's phenomenal. If our kids can go score fifty points at a national meet, but when you won it that year, we scored sixty. Sixty, yeah. Uh, and normally it takes about that. And I think projectors have got them at sixty-two and us at fifty-six. Uh, and Florida at 49 and Georgia at 47. And I mean, it's there's four or five teams that are just yeah. really, really good. But uh, Arkansas on paper has way more qualifiers. But uh, I don't think their four by one's great. I don't think their four by four's great. Of the 18 qualifiers, there's four on a relay. So as you oh, said, okay. it's slightly yeah. bogus. Uh, yeah. uh, but they got two. They have a national champion in the discus that transferred from Missouri. He's there. Uh, mm-hmm. They have another discus thrower that transferred in there from from Tennessee. They have three jumpers from Tennessee, a sprinter from Tennessee. So uh, we got to be, we we just got to have great meat. And yeah. uh, when you go to the national meet, you got to be on your game. Well, and so who somebody won it last year? They scored like eighty something. Who was that? Well, LSU the year before. Yeah. The year before eighty four. Yeah. Was- yeah, that was in Eugene, and it was bad weather, and and uh, they had a little bit of luck, and some people. Kind of drop the stick, and some things happen to other yeah. people. And, but they did; they had a great meet. Well, we're ranked number two in the country going into this with Arkansas number one, and we flipped back and forth between the two of y'all. Up uh, Texas Tech has been number one this year, right? Yeah, number we one. have, we have, we've been number one a couple of times, and then they qualified some more people. And uh, week to week, that's how it gets ranked in in our sport. And but I mean, they won the indoor championship; they're really good. I'm just hoping they don't have a good meet. Yeah. And well, we do. It's uh, yeah, that's a good hope. Yes, uh, you know we just want to do good, and and if we, it, but we're fast. Uh, you know, I keep. How do you get all these fast guys? Well, I never have at Abilene Christian. I had good four by ones and good hundred. I, I won the national championship a couple of times in the hundred or the two hundred. But what, since we won in nineteen, it's just been we have been able to attract sprinters, and and I'm always been a hurdle coach. I always yeah. believe. Uh, everybody, I always think coaches, this is my pet peeve, but all coaches won't, won't get stopwatched and just say, hey, you know, set, go, mm-hmm. and have a bunch of runners. But if you want to win championships, you normally, you teach technique. And yeah. I, I believe if you spread it out, we've got pole vaulters, long jumpers, triple jumpers, discus throwers, all those things. But I just think it makes a difference. And hurdling, we'll go to the Big 12, and they'll be Six heats of the 200, six heats of the 100, mm-hmm. and there'll be two heats of the hurdle. Yeah. Not everybody can hurdle. So you eliminate a bunch of competition to me by having hurdlers. Yeah. So it gets you some good ones, and we do have You're some You're telling good ones. secrets now. Yeah, but I just think people, I mean, it's and not And we got rocking. a good one. Caleb Dean is. He's really good. He's a superstar. He's going to be the key, I think. If he does great in the 110 hurdles and then does great in the, yeah. in the 400 hurdles, then we're going to be in good shape. And Oscar Edland. Yep. I'm hoping Oscar can make the finals. He's a young sophomore that's running good, but he's going to have to step it up a little bit to make a final. Yep. He can do it. Anton Andrews. And Antoine Andrews is a freshman who came in at mid-year, and he got sixth indoors. And if he'll go do that again, man, we are, we're doing good. We're cooking. Yeah. Right. But they're they're going to run on Wednesday, and both, we're going to know how we look. Kirby called me and said, hey, should I be there Wednesday? And I said, Kirby, really, you need to just come Friday. And I can tell you after Wednesday how we're going to do <laughs> Well, we got to fill up lanes. I call it. You got to make the finals. That's what well, those been, kids hear me say. That hey, we got to fill up lanes today. Yeah. That's all we got to do. Yeah, and the rest of it will take care of Cause itself. Because you're, you're pointing. If you're making, there's 24 people in every event, and they're going to go down to eight, yeah. top two in each heat, and the next two best times out of three heats. Yeah. So that's, it's tough. Boy. It really is. It's really hard. But this fun. There's nothing better than a great track meet, and there can't be a better track meet than the NCAA championship. No, it's really good, and that's we're so fun. we're showing good weather. I mean, 90. It'll be hot, but our sprinters need that. Yeah. And then, uh, but not real windy, and it doesn't show a lot of rain. So hopefully, this has kind of gotten through. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's exciting. I'm telling you, Coach. I and. Uh, to have another shot at a national championship. Oh no, championship. you don't get these opportunities very many times, and I'm just thrilled that we're we're in the hunt, and we're going to have an opportunity to go down there. And we just got to compete well. Uh, we got to be on our A game, and these kids have really looked good. Every time we've been to a championship, they have always stood stood up. 
And so I, I have no reason to believe that they won't. I know we won't have a perfect meet, but we just need to get in the finals and give us a self chance. Yep. How, how much is uh, mental frame of mind, with being mentally prepared for, you know, Coach Hayward and I were talking about these pitchers and that some of them just have this, you know, just this bulldog kind of mentality. Yeah. Do you, well, I always tell them, yeah, yeah, you know, the heat sheets came out yesterday. Well, you're looking at this guy that ran 992 uh -huh. in the rest region and this, that. And, and you can't do that. I mean, you, you don't need to be, I say, don't be looking around in your other people's lanes. It just means don't worry about who's in your heat. You execute your race. You concentrate on what you're going to do. And uh, you can't get too caught up in that. That's where I see is the mental game is you got to be focused on your lane and on what you're doing, mm -hmm. how your coach has coached you, and uh, we'll be fine if we you do use that. the right technique. You better believe it. Don't get worried about all this other stuff going on. You can't yeah. control that. Is that how you move your arms? Is that you a bet part, you. part of it? Yes, sir. <laughs> but all that's just involuntary at this point. <laughs> Just run. Yep. Well, you, you gotta, got it down. You, gotta, you know what to do. You know what to do. Yeah. yeah. You've been listening to the Sports Talk with Thetford and Ashby podcast from Double T 97.3. Catch the show live Saturday mornings from 9 to noon on Double T 97.3 FM or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app.